This week on the Comedological Report, Frankie McDonald takes us for a tour around Sydney, Nova Scotia. All that and more on your show about how much the weather sucks in Canada. <laughs> well, weather it's hot, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather we got. Wait a minute. Well, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather, weather or not. Good morning, Prince George. Good afternoon, Winnipeg. Welcome to the Comedian Report. I am your host, Joey Only. The Comedian Report is a show about how much the weather sucks in Canada. Comedy plus meteorology equals comedian You're hearing us on CFER 88.7 FM in Prince George, British Columbia, Saturdays at 10 a.m. and repeats 4 o'clock on Tuesdays. And then you hear us also, if you're in Winnipeg, from the University of Winnipeg on CKUW 95.9 FM. Thank you very much to all you meteorology students. I'm sure that you tune in every week and we'll talk all about education and things like that. I'm here with my panel of meteorologists. That includes the man himself, Frankie McDonald, the weatherman out in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Tonight he's in Sydney, Nova Scotia and he's going to give us a bit of a tour of the town. I also have, uh, as always, Brandon Houck, our lead meteorologist on the show in Western Canada. He's here to talk to us about, well, primarily Alberta weather, but prairie weather and Western Canada in general and all that sort of stuff. We're going to review stories of the week. It's, uh, we're recording the show in the afternoon of the 27th of, of January. And so you'll be hearing us in Prince George on the 29th, and you'll be hearing us on uh, the 31st in Winnipeg. So this is more of a review and maybe sort of what to look forward to, not so much as what's happening today, just to make that clear. Sometimes we'll say today we're referring to Thursday the 27th. Anyways, we're also here with Joe Stover, and I, th- I think he's in Churchill, Manitoba again, and yep. he's our good friend that uh, refuels aircrafts, plays hockey, and uh, does polar bear tourism and everything. He also has a show on CKUW 95.9 FM, the How Do You Do Review. All right, let's first talk to the man himself, Frankie McDonald. Frankie. Ladies and gentlemen, Frankie. I'm doing great so far. It's cold old time. Sydney, Nova Scotia right now. They got a huge snowstorm head for Boston and New York. This Saturday comes. It's going to bring a lot of snow in Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York. Those places are going to bring snow change into a lot of rain. Nova Scotia on Saturday. New Brunswick is going to bring so much snow on Saturday. January 29th, so it's Bonaventure, Quebec, Gas Bay, Per Se, Quebec. Vermont Monica lives in Bonaventure, Quebec. She's getting a lot of snow on Saturday evening. Where Monica is at. Uh, who else is getting snow in North America, Frankie? New Brunswick, Moncton, St. John, Fredericton, Miramichi, Baffers, Hamilton, Edison, Woodstock, Grand Falls, Bangor, Maine, USA, Boss, USA. What about uh, all that cold air in central Canada? It's going to bring lots of Santa Ana winds in California. It got a lot of fires in California. Then it got a deep freeze in Orlando, Florida. Then it got a deep freeze headed for Florida, even down Miami. It's going to bring really cold air in Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. Because of the big Arctic high driving all the cold air all the way down Florida this time. What's going on in central Canada with all that cold air? That means it's, it's, going to, uh, it's really, really cold right now in central Canada. It's going to turn cold again in Vancouver, Victoria, in the Pacific Northwest. How about in Europe? In Europe, the one air cold air fighting each other as of right now. Cause a lot of rain in the UK. What about Russia and Ukraine? So cold in Russia, especially in Siberia, Ukraine. Jerusalem, Israel had snow, even Egypt might have had snow, or Libya and Algeria and Sudan. The cold air is all the way down the Middle East. What about over in Japan, Frankie? They're getting a lot of snow west coast of Japan, as of right now, including China, South Korea, North Korea, Flavia, South Russia. They're getting really cold air as of right now. Sydney, Australia is so hot. New Zealand, a lot of thunderstorms in southeast Australia, including Johannesburg, South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. It's really dry in South Africa right now. So where are you in Sydney, Nova Scotia? Right now you're down on location. Charlotte, uh, down Charlotte Street in Sydney, Nova Scotia, where I'm at right now. Show us what do you see in there, Frankie. Those are the buildings and things like that. So that's, uh, is that downtown right there? Downtown Sydney, Nova Scotia. I'm showing you that right now. And here's downtown Sydney, Charlotte Street, as of right now. So you got uh, some And then bags. here's downtown Sydney. Here's all the other buildings there. Here's Charlotte Street. How far are you from where the uh, Cape Breton Eagles play, Frankie? Not that far. Cool. That's a post office you got there? They got a post office right here. So that's where people can, you know, mail their stuff to other people? Yeah. 
Is okay. that how Fred the Bear got to uh, Bonaventure? Did you? Did, that was uh, at Pier Post. That was at the Whitney Pier Post Office. That's why Fred the Bear and Old Bear went to the Pier Post Office and left for Bonaventure to come back for Monica. Right. How about uh, down the street, some Frankie? Show us some more. Here, so I'm showing you more. Take us on a tour of uh, Sydney, Nova Scotia tonight. Here's the boardwalk walk up ahead. You got some nice painting going on. What's that a painting of? It's for Luminaires in Sydney, Nova Scotia. It's like some green alien octopus guys smoking something, or th I think. It's a, it's a, it's a, some artist did that for Luminaires. Is there a lot of that kind of painting in downtown Sydney, Nova Scotia? Quite a bit. They, they, you, they put it up for Luminaires every September. How old is the downtown of Sydney? Pretty old. North End is the oldest part of Sydney that's up ahead. It's been there for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. So there's a dentist there? Is that where uh, you get your teeth looked at? No. That's somebody else. Oh, it's just one of those competitive competitor dentists. That's the other guys. That's really nice to see some of Sydney, Nova Scotia, Frankie. If you uh, find yourself down another block later on, show us some more of your town. We want to see as much as we can. It's pretty cool that you're, uh, you're just here walking around and we can make a radio show from a cell phone. Yeah. You know, you know what today is, Frankie? It's our 50th today, show. Today's the 50th show. 50 shows we've done together. We, I missed a couple weeks because of uh, fires last year and being real busy. But, uh, so we should be at like 55 or something like that, but we're at 50. Nonetheless, happy 50th episode, Frankie. That means I'm heading to another show right now. Are you? I'm right now. I'll be right back. Okay, come back. Frankie McDonald. <laughs> heading to another show right now. So he was on with uh, talking to Tom Brady on CTV News. Yeah, isn't that wild? And it's not like Tom Brady, a CTV news personality. It's actually Tom Brady, the, the, uh, that guy. That guy, the, uh, yeah. the guy who uh, throws the foosball around. The football guy. He's won yeah. some of those uh, World Bowls. Yeah, I liked, I liked what, uh, what somebody said when somebody, uh, Frankie said, yeah, I got to talk to Tom Brady today. And somebody said, Tom Brady actually got to meet Frankie McDonald. And I said, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, Tom Brady got to beat the goat. That's right. That's that's what that was you. It was you all along, Joey. Well, maybe you said it first. I don't no, know. No, no, no. I didn't say it. So I just I appreciated who said it. So turns out it was you. Uh, very true. Frankie McDonald, the greatest of all time, the goat. Real just gone is real. Gone to be another show. He's like, see you guys. I'll I'll be back, and he probably will. So uh, let's talk to you guys. Uh, Brandon Houck, we always go to you second, so we might as well. Talk to me about uh, that wet, cold weather you've been getting. There's a pattern change coming from British Columbia, certainly. So uh, I was noticing today that uh, we had that high cloud forming and uh, forming little streaks and lines and showing us that uh, there's weather coming. Wait a minute. Yeah. This is a strange time because, uh, because you've got to get your kids at 7 p.m. Pacific time. 11 p.m. late to kind of like this is a strange time for you to do the show. That's true. Yes, I don't usually uh, do the show at uh, three in the afternoon Pacific time. It's really bright in my house because of it. If I open my curtains, I'll be blinded. Because your kids are somewhere. Yeah, well, I got to meet them tonight. I haven't seen them for two weeks now. I had uh, COVID, right? So I'm going to pick them up early this week. And uh, Willow's skiing all day at Mount Timothy. So. She's not getting off her bus till sometime later tonight, so I just have to leave a big chunk of time open to be ready to go and meet them in Quenelle. It's like an well, hour thank, drive. Thank, thank goodness for that because I'm actually able to participate in the show this week because usually I'm playing hockey when you normally do the recordings during hockey season. So, Frankie, what, what show are you just going on there? But that means, uh, did you hear about that? Reckless Airways Radio is 8.30 p.m. late to come tonight. Reckless Airways Radio with Sam. Right. I was just about to ask Brandon about uh, prairie weather, but I want to ask you one question first while we still have you here, Frankie. So uh, you got to meet Tom Brady. Tom Brady yeah, got to meet you, I mean. It's a great one all the time. Yeah, the greatest quarterback of all time. I was Meets the to greatest him, weatherman of all time. Max Field is the guy to interview me. How many Super Bowl, uh, Bowls did uh, Tom Brady win? Lots of it. And now he got to meet you, so that's even greater. Yeah. 
That's almost as good as winning a Super Bowl meeting Frankie McDonald. That was an ultra great. I was on the CTV Atlantic News on Wednesday. So now to Frankie McDonald. Thank you so much, Kaylin. So now to Frankie McDonald's brush with superstardom. One of our favorite Maritimers joined Tom Brady on a podcast. Here's CTV's Ryan McDonald with the connection between all-time greats. When Frankie McDonald logged on to one of his favorite podcasts Monday evening, he had no idea he was on a collision course with one of sports' biggest stars. Touchdown! A bullet from Tom Brady. My friend was like, yeah, uh, I'm going to be with him that day. The host of the Sobro Radio podcast out of New York City says through a mutual friend, he had the legendary quarterback on for a brief interview that lasted about three minutes. During that time, Frankie was also on air from his usual spot standing in front of the A&W restaurant in Sydney. I happened to just call in Frankie while we were on with Tom. And uh, it was it was a match made. As they say, the rest is history. I say you're doing a great job. The exchange between Brady and Frankie lasted all of a few seconds, and it's unclear if the Buccaneers QB knew who he was talking to. Frankie was like, hey, how you doing? I love the weather. And then Tom's like, uh, oh, hey, Frankie, uh, good to meet you. Obviously, Tom Brady's the GOAT. I tip my hat to him. He is the GOAT. Brady may be the greatest football player of all time, but to Frankie, all of those Super Bowl rings and records aren't the numbers that really matter. On his Instagram, he has 10 million followers. He has only 2 million followers on his Twitter. This is Frankie McDowell, my own TV station live. It's Indy Nova Scotia. Of course, Frankie has a big social media platform of his own, and it was the power of his words, not Tom's, that got people talking about this. No one cared until Frankie tweeted about it. That's when people cared. The podcast host says he now realizes he may have had two goats or greatest of all time on the same broadcast. Around this corner, Frankie McDonald is a bigger star than Tom Brady in some regards. People just people just like uh, people like Frankie. You know, they they like that. He's not um, some big industry guy. He's just him being himself. It makes me feel great. And it's excellent. It's epic. So while talking with Tom left a good impression, Frankie says there are other big names he'd like to rub shoulders with. I just say hi to Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, and I'll say hi to David Letterman. For now, the final score reads two goats on the same podcast and one cool story to tell back home in Cape Breton. Ryan McDonald, CTV News, Sydney. How many times have you been on CTV News? Well, quite a bit of times. Yeah, like probably a hundred Probably a few, quite a few times. And uh, did you hear about that? I was talking to Tom Brady on a Max Field. He runs the Sobro Radio Podcast, Max Field. How long were you talking to Tom Brady for? A couple of few seconds. And he got to leave right away. That was because he was so busy. And I, he just he knew about me and things like that. Tom Brady's a really nice guy. Max I, is going to put up his podcast. He's going to let me know Max Field. I bet. It's easy to be nice when uh, you're a multimillionaire, too. Not a care in the world. That he's met, and Tom Brady's being really nice to me. Yeah, he should be. Frankie, yes, go t- greatest of all time, Frankie McDonald. That means, that's why I was on the news Wednesday. So uh, what I want you to do, Frankie, is uh, maybe walk to the next block you're going to walk to. And, and while you're walking... Oh, does it? Yeah. Ah, I see. I see what's going on. Where's the next place you can find internet? I mean, it's such a strange time for you to interview me at 7 o'clock p.m. Length of time instead. Yeah, how much time do you need to walk to a warmer place that has internet? That means, uh, uh, uh just up there on a second top worse and if you go further. Well, why don't you go down to the next place and then rejoin, and then we'll ask you some more questions about that next place. Yes. Then we can uh, see more of Sydney, Nova Scotia. A radio tour. Here's downtown. Frankie's showing us. We got uh, Oak Hall, it says. It doesn't look like it's made of oak, but uh, that's what it says. Oak Hall. And there's uh, a little bit of snow on the ground and some uh, pretty nice cars. Looks like people can... Looks like people have pretty nice cars there in Sydney. Oak Hall's closed down. Oh, what what did it used to be? It used to be Oak Hall once upon a time. So it was an, it was an Oak Hall. The Oak Hall. That was an old hall. It's an English store, but it's closed down. What kind of stuff did they have at Oak Hall, Frankie? Like uh, con- concerts and stuff? Uh-huh. At least they keep their sidewalks nice and shoveled in Sydney, Nova Scotia, it looks like. Yes. There's Cape Breton Curiosity Shop. They had copies of my book from 2018, 2019. 
the copies of my book were there. Oh, yeah. Does it, do a lot of your books sell there? Do they still have copies? The copies of my book were there. Cape Breton Curiosity Shop. So Cape Breton so, Curiosity quite a, Shop. Quite a bit of copies of my book sold there back then. So if you happen to be in Cape Breton and, and you're looking for Frankie McDonald book, I've never really seen much of Sydney. I want to see it, though. I flew wanna... over it once. That was a, That's the closest I've been to Sydney is flying from St. John's to Halifax. I could see it out the window and I knew it was Sydney, but that's as close as I've ever been. Yeah, like I came by on the ferry to Prince Edward Island the one time. So much. I'm doing great. The fan of mine say hi to me. Oh, yeah? Yes. Are they right there? One of them is sleeping right now. That means the face guy's doing the show once a month. He told me that. Are you the most famous person in Sydney, Nova Scotia, you think? Yeah. Yeah, probably ever, eh? I'm doing great in these days. I don't think I've ever met uh, a famous person in Sydney or heard of anyone else besides you. Did, did, you, did, you, did you hear about that? Another person is Lisa Riot. Oh, what is Lisa Riot? She's from Ontario. She, she's one of the MLA lost the election. Lisa Ray, that's one of them. Thank you. A professional boxer, that's another one. Oh, and uh, Danny Gallivan apparently is from, from Sydney, Nova Scotia as well. Yeah. Uh, Joey, Joey probably remembers him from Hockey Night in Canada. Danny Gallivan, of course, famous announcer. What about Ryan was thinking of a professional boxer? I don't think I ever heard of him. My favorite... Ryan, uh, his last name is R-O-Z-I-C-K-I. My favorite uh, radio announcer for hockey is Joe Bowen. I just love the way he calls a game, but I, I used to love listening to Tom Cheek and Jerry Howarth call baseball games. I just thought they were magicians with their voices and the way they could make a game come to life. Absolutely. Danny Gallivan totally had that kind of thing going on. Yeah, Bob Bob Cole was my guy. I mean, obviously, that's uh, the, my generation's uh, Foster Hewitt or Danny Gallivan, I suppose. Um, yeah, Bob Cole is just, to me, the... yeah. Like when him and Harry Neal would call a hockey game, it was just the, the greatest thing, greatest thing ever. And um, uh, there's been a few too, as far as radio announcers for, um, for, for hockey games and, and baseball games. Uh, one of the, one of the best actually for me, I mean, me being a, a Tigers fan, um, Dan Dickerson is, is, is one of my favorite, probably my favorite baseball uh, baseball announcer Paul Edmonds out of Winnipeg actually does a really good job too. He does the Jets games now, but he used to do the uh, the Gold Eyes games, and yeah, he's he's one of my favorites. But as far as the goat for me is absolutely is absolutely Bob Cole. Well, we were very lucky to have a great baseball uh, color commentator last week, and Mark Grant. And if people yeah. want to see that show, uh, they can always go to my YouTube channel, Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude. YouTube.com, Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude, and see the episode of us uh, talking to Mark Grant, the announcer for San Diego Padres, for like 26 years or something like that. And uh, he was just super cool and super nice. I hope we have him on again sometime. And, you know, that's because Frankie always just sort of throws things at you. He's like, you know, he's not too communicative in his Frankie way. So I get, you know, a message like, Mark Grant's coming on your show tonight. And I was like, okay, right on. And I, it could just be anybody because Frankie would make friends with anybody. You know, he's so nice that way. Like here's a, it could be a fan of his from Australia. It could be, you just don't, you know, Mark. And then suddenly I would, okay, here's this nice guy from uh, California, Mark Grant. And then as soon as he started talking, I was like, wait a second, <laughs> who's this guy? And then I re like, I realized I know who this guy is. I've, I've seen him calling baseball games. Right. So, <laughs> and yeah. uh, not only that, but uh, having played baseball video games, a lot of the era that he was from RBI baseball, two and three for uh, the old Nintendo I'd uh, pitched with Mark Grant before. And I used to like being the Padres <laughs> because they had uh, not only Tony Gwynn on it, but that the old team had, well, you know, unfortunately Roberto Alomar is a jerk. Well, I didn't know that back in the early nineties, he was the greatest thing ever. And Joe Carter, they were both on that San Diego Padres team. So I was able to, to be those guys that weren't on the Blue Jay team sometimes, right? You couldn't trade in those little games. It was just like the roster set. Anyway, so we're we were talking to Brandon. How going to talk to Brandon about uh, Western Canada weather? So let's fire at her before uh, Frankie finds internet somewhere along the way again. Oh, I don't choke on popcorn here. Yeah, and I should also mention uh, we actually have a somebody from Brooks on Hockey Night in Canada who announces uh, the games. Uh, Harnaran and Singh, I think his name yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He uh, started right where I started. 
uh, on the radio in Brooks there. So really? well, yeah. you're the, maybe you're on the same path, Brandon. Might be, might be. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, he's, uh, I think those was most of Calgary and Edmonton games, but I think I've seen him go across into the U S for a couple of games as well this season. So but that's obviously not the big news in hockey at a Brooks, Alberta this week as uh, you know, you have a, a young player who's now, set the all-time record for the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Tell us about this. Yeah, so that would be TJ Hughes setting that record last night, actually. Uh, first goal of the whole game and 50 goals uh, this season. Incredible. Last person that got 49 goals was in the 2000-2001 season. So crazy stuff. And I think it was Danny Heatley, one of these guys. Right, and Danny Heatley put up a bunch of 50-goal scoring seasons for the Ottawa Senators. I just hated him because I was a Leaf fan. and uh, <laughs> I met him, so... And he's a terrible person. Here, actually. Uh, I, I'll yeah. go get it here. You have his jersey. He's a terrible person, I thought, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he, wasn't a, he wasn't a very popular, uh, popular player. Like, he was a great player. But, uh, yeah, circumstances kind of... Oh, there it is. Danny so Heatley. there. Like, didn't, he get, well. didn't he get drunk and like punch people in the face or something or I don't know what he did. He did something. Uh, it was a, it was a car act was a car accident. Uh, he was driving a bit too fast with uh with a guy, a teammate of his actually, um, who ended up dying because of the dying because of the crash. So that was Oh, that's even better. There you go. Yeah, I just a little better. He was the biggest hit to score and whenever uh Daniel Alfredson, the captain of the Ottawa Senators, would touch the puck because of uh, a hit he'd had in the playoffs on the Leafs. Every Leaf fan would boo him, much the same way that John Tavares gets booed now when he touches a puck in New York, right? <laughs> Just the chorus of every time he touches it, boo, like without without a doubt, right? Well, but I, was... I, never, I never felt that anger towards uh, Alfredson. I thought he was a pretty class player in a lot of ways, and, uh, you know, I admired him as an opponent. And uh, same with Spezza, you know, I, I hated Ottawa, but uh, I had some admiration and have Spezza as a Leaf now. I just love it, right? But uh, Danny Heatley, I just couldn't stand him. Yeah, the the thing with Alfredson was uh, what what really got Leafs fans dander up um, was when initially Matt Sundin. You remember when he th- broke his stick and threw the stick into the crowd because he was ticked off and he ended up with like a two game suspension or something. Uh, so Ottawa, a few games later was in Toronto and Alfredson shot the puck and broke his stick and he pretended to throw his stick over and then kind of giggled and dropped his stick. And the entire air Canada center was just (laughs) raining him with booze. Like it was the ultimate troll job, but I loved it super hard. I believe there was also a hit that he laid out the playoffs that was uh, much hated and uh, resulted in injury in the Leafs. Oh, Tucker. Yeah. He knocked out. He, he, uh, it was Darcy I was Tucker. Gonna, I was going to say Tucker, but I wanted to just double check before I started blabbing my mouth. Yeah. It was Darcy Tucker. Yeah, your gut was right. It was Darcy Tucker. So, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> let's get to Western Canada weather. <laughs> sure, sure, yes. Uh, so, actually, this week here, it's been actually quite lovely here across southern Alberta with the westerly flow. We've had uh, above average temperatures, temp- many days above freezing. I think every day so far this week has been above freezing. The warmest was on Saturday when we reached 12 degrees. And I may have actually put shorts on to uh, show, be a show off outside. So that's what I did on Saturday when it was really nice. And I, I went for a nice walk and I was actually getting warm enough that I had to take my jacket off. So, yeah, so it ended up being that way. So. Now, we are going to be in for a bit of a pattern change. The middle part of this week, actually, we had a few little snow showers, a little gusty winds here and there, but nothing too significant. Uh, as we go into next week, though, uh, since today is the 27th, so the weekend's still looking pretty good right across uh, the prairies, especially in southern Alberta, a little colder in Manitoba as we uh, go through the weekend here. But we do have an area of low pressure coming in on Monday, And that is what's going to change the weather drastically as we go into next week here. The area of low pressure will dive towards Manitoba by Monday the 31st, and that will spread snow across parts of southern Alberta, across southern parts of Saskatchewan, 
probably about two to five centimeters of snow expected with some areas in the foothills and the Rockies probably seeing up over 10 centimeters of snow as the Arctic area of high pressure decides to dive in and that will produce that upslope flow along the foothills. So we'll see a little bit more snow in Tuesday. And we'll also get some snow in Southern Manitoba as well. Uh, pro I'm going to go with five to 10, but might be a little higher than that. We'll uh, keep an eye on those snowfall totals in the next week. But Arctic area of high pressure dives in from the north Tuesday. First wave of Arctic air comes in on Tuesday. So uh, many areas across southern Saskatchewan, we're looking at uh, overnight lows, minus 37 Saskatoon, minus 34 Regina by Wednesday morning. And then it gets even colder as another shot of Arctic air dives in from the north Thursday into Friday. And this uh, cold air mass is really going to drop those temperatures. We might actually have minus 40 in Winnipeg by friday of next week so and wind chill on top of that so that is going to be that's going to be a lot of fun oh yeah probably not for anybody who wants to be outside or working outdoors or anything like that but uh yeah we're in for uh, another pretty nasty cold snap there are some signs that we are going to warm up but the new models are now all trending us uh, staying cold all of next week after the uh drastic change coming Sunday night into Monday. Well, and it looks like British Columbia is going to miss out for the most part on that extreme cold, and that's the nice thing. Uh, everyone was really worried that, uh, I mean, Fort St. John, maybe Fort Nelson, Dawson Creek, they probably aren't going to be so lucky. They're probably going to get some of that uh, cold, but maybe not the coldest of the cold. I saw that uh, that high pressure seems to dive down uh, between Saskatchewan and Winnipeg sometime next week, and that's where the coldest temperatures will all sort of be. And even in BC right now, like the spread is pretty moderate. Uh, it's almost 10 degrees in Prince Rupert at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's minus 11 in Yoho, so up high in the Rocky Mountains, still not that extremely cold. Prince George, though, this pattern change is coming. And uh, by Friday night, you're probably going to start seeing a chance of flurries uh, with uh, some light winds. Saturday, though, uh, be about one degrees, turning to snow and nighttime cloudy. So we're going to see a little bit of a dive in temperatures next week, but not much, as I was just saying. Uh, still a chance of flurries on Sunday, minus 10 by Sunday night, clear by Monday again, uh, minus six, sun, mix of sun and cloud, coming into another pattern, another round of flurries, another uh, shot of snow, snow, snow. So 60% chance all on the board for Tuesday night, or Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday night. Wednesday morning, steady temperatures, nine, minus nine, minus 14, things like that. But, you know, so uh, definitely a pattern change for us. It's been kind of a lovely January, really. I mean, how it, it turned pretty warm, don't you think? Did you think it was going to, when we're in the, the nexus of freezing extreme cold in December, did you think it was going to be as nice as it's become? Uh, actually, I, I kind of knew that, uh, that would be seeing the temperature rebound. It was, we can't be staying minus 30 forever at least. So we definitely got the rebound we deserved in the, uh, weather situation. <laughs> we went through the, uh, month of January, but uh, as I know, things are going to change again into next week. And, uh, for sure this winter is not over yet, even though I have no snow on the ground now, it's just all, I, I might actually have to show you just to brag about it for two seconds here i'm a little proud of myself because right when everyone was starting to panic looking at long-range gfs models they were saying uh oh like look how cold it's going to get in bc and right as everyone's doing that i put out a video called uh british columbia having a very warm january okay let's look at your cell phone here there you oh, go look at that yeah it's uh brown <laughs> yellow i guess yeah so, yeah, that's how nice it's been for the last few weeks. Still a few little areas of snow in the treed areas, but, yeah, that'd be about it. But we're going to probably get uh, a little white again next week. So Looks like June in Alberta. June in Alberta pretty much looks like. And the Canada geese have been here, too. They've been, I don't, they don't even know what they're going to do. They're, they're confused no. as much as everyone else is. So. The poor they're things. flying here, they're flying back north they're going back south i guess if they yeah poor geese at least they're they're probably flying to ottawa now that's <laughs> probably freedom for the canada geese <laughs> no, no one's stopping them from crossing the border i guess the geese aren't that mad honk yeah so I, I intentionally made a video called british columbia having a warm january or something to that effect uh like what's i could give you the exact name of it january looking warmer than usual 
January 16th to 20th work week weather. So I only got 92 views on that video. You think guy putting out videos that are pretty right about the weather and everyone's panicking at this point. Extreme cold, it's coming back to BC in February. And I just, I thought, man, like we've been just getting pounded with Pacific weather and, and that cold air mass, really, I just don't see how it's going to make its way this far west again. It's going to have to fight the forces of uh, everything going on in the weather world to make its way back this way. It's more likely that that cold will come from the north itself proper again, right? And I just had, don't see sign of that yet for us. So we sort of fall outside that bubble, but not Joe Stover. Joe Stover is going to be right in the bubble. In fact, they don't even give a cold weather warning for you when the rest of Manitoba gets one. No, we have a bit of a different... Uh... A uh, different threshold for the uh, for the extreme cold, and I used to have that information handy, but it's it's buried buried somewhere. But um, yeah, that uh, last week when it was when the entire province was red except for Manitoba and a small except from Churchill the Southwest, yeah, small section in the Southwest. That was uh, I started puffing my chest out a little bit, saying, "Well, yeah, we don't need we don't need extreme cold warnings in Churchill, and we know it's already going to be cold. It's already." January and February is always should we should always forever be in a extreme cold warning and it's this winter has been no exception but one thing that is different from this winter uh, from last winter is that we are just again getting over another blizzard I think this is the third third one of the year and we didn't have any blizzards last year I think we, we had maybe one one little episode back in March, maybe, but uh, it's, we haven't seen that in Northern Manitoba in the last few years, like blizzards in, you know, the coldest months like January and February. But the one that we just got over now um, was a pretty big low system at that kind of was when we were getting it the worst, the low was centered right over Hudson Bay, Churchill, Arviat, Rankin, all those spots on western Hudson Bay were getting crazy, crazy north winds. And on the Quebec coast and Santa Kilowack, they were getting crazy, crazy south winds. And it was just, it was almost a Hudson Bay-sized low system. So that is that has moved on, and we were... Visibility of 400 meters, uh, 40 kilometer an hour winds, and sustained for four hours. That's uh, the definition of blizzard. Now, there is definition differences in different regions too. Uh, right. So you, you find yourself outside of this, this problem because you live in a place that's just always cold, so they don't give you a cold weather warning. And it's much the same here in Wells. We can get 30 centimeters of snow and the rest of the caribou, because we're in the same weather region, they don't issue a snowfall warning for the caribou, even though everybody in the caribou knows like hey it's uh just puking in the mountains right now but uh for some reason we don't get that we don't have a yeah. major highway going through we're at the end of the road so for some reason they just like well if you're going there it's that's you're at the end of the road there in churchill and that's the extreme weather you just get and that's that's pretty much it yeah and, and the contrast is always pretty funny with the with the extreme cold warnings because there was a extreme cold warning in effect for the gta and uh, they said that temperatures might just might get to minus 15 and that's you know it's all relative you know like i mean everybody up up around these parts say oh that's nothing and it's not cold i wish we'd love to have you know minus 5 minus 15 and it's it's all it's all relative you know and and we're acclimatized to this which is a reason that i'm i loathe the summer you know i'm not a big fan of of the heat, but you know, it might be different if I grew up in, you know, Tallahassee or something like that. So it's, uh, there's, there's this other problem too. And you might've seen this meme. It's a picture of these, uh, Canadian girls and they're on their cell phones and they're in these skimpy little dresses and high heels and they're yeah. snowing and it looks visibly awful out. And they're like, Oh, Canadian girls are just built tough. And, uh, but I have a different take on that. Uh, first of all, I think that they're probably on their messaging on their phones or calling someone saying, why aren't you here to pick me up? I'm freezing. As One second, Noel, you can look at them as unintelligent for their choice of clothing, but when you don't get weather that's uh, so minus 15 suddenly can be for people who are used to you know, being able to wear a skimpy dress out on a Friday night can suddenly be a shocker and uh, sometimes lethal. And just uh, hello, I'll just interrupt you for one second and say hello to Noel Chaos. She's just joined the show. And uh, we'll get to you talking about Vancouver, but what were you going to say? 
Uh, I was actually going to comment on that meme because I I make jokes about this almost every Halloween and every time we have bad weather in Vancouver because you you would see those people on transit all the time and they would be like it's so cold out my uh, and they're like uh, and then they and then they would complain the sidewalk is so slippery yeah be like whom you don't say I want I wonder if I wonder if you have an easier time navigating the sidewalk if you wore shoes in in the, in the <laughs> snow and the rain or you know maybe it wouldn't be so cold if you wore a coat considering it's minus five out well i was like sitting at a, a bonfire in uh at music on the mountain festival in fort st james a bunch of years back and i was wearing uh my canada goose coat that i often wear uh the zipper's broken now so i don't wear it anymore but i wore this big long blue coat for years and it can zip right up it is you know, made in Canada was a, a rancher sort of style coat. You know, someone was complaining to me about how cold it was out because it was probably like f- plus five. And I, I said, well, it's, you know, you're just not dressed for the north. Like you really didn't, you came up north, not prepared for how cold it can get here at night. And then they started kind of mocking me like, well, what about you? I thought you were some kind of a mountain man. Like, look at you wearing a parka. And uh, I said, yeah, I am a mountain man. And that's why uh, I'm wearing a park and I'm warm and you're not wearing a coat and you're cold. Huddling by the fire is uh, close as you can in the middle of the night. So A, I may be acclimatized to cold weather, but I'm also uh, acclimatized to the thinking of being ready for, for cold weather. So how cold are you looking at getting there in Churchill, Joe? Well, we're sticking around, um, around you know anywhere between minus 25 and minus 30 like the long range forecast at least for the rest of uh rest of the week i mean we've got uh starting with the tomorrow which is friday the 28th um daytime highs minus 24 minus 28 minus 29 minus 24 minus 31 minus 31 so that's in a little bit of contrast with the uh the old farmer's almanac you know i think uh i, I think those guys might uh might not have their thumb on the pulse like I thought that they did. They said it's supposed to be sunny and mild. Sunny and mild, they say. So I don't know, Brandon. Brandon, were you ever one of those kinds of guys who read the Old Farmer's Almanac when... Uh... Uh, they're really good at uh, cooking recipes, I think. <laughs> I'd be about it. I, I'm, lo- I'm looking at a extended wind chill for uh, later next week, and I see a minus 55. Is that for That's- Churchill? Churchill, yeah. Awesome. That's that's wonderful. I may miss that. I'm not sure. I was actually uh, going to jump on the train tonight to go down to Winnipeg, but I've got uh, got some hockey and the Royal Rumble is this weekend and championship the Royal Rumble. football. I love that. Listen, let's get ready to rumble. Let's get re- let's get ready to rumble. I don't watch wrestling like I did when I was a kid, obviously, <laughs> but the uh, the the six weeks between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania that that's prime time watching man and the rumble you never know who you're gonna see like that's when they start dragging out the old guys again that get eliminated in 30 seconds like you might see like um you know bushwhacker loot come out and like what the heck has he been up to and then like yeah cousin butch Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, so that, that's always kind of good. <laughs> Royal rumble is great for uh for the nostalgic wrestling fan because that's uh you never know when you're you never know who you're gonna see and then then yeah so not not much of a wrestling fan these days but but i i always i always watch the rumble i haven't missed a rumble yet so that's uh that's my plan i'm gonna stick around churchill for another week and then i'm gonna take the two-day 1700 kilometer train trip next thursday from uh from churchill to winnipeg i'll be in winnipeg on february the 5th and according to what i just heard brandon saying i should not uh bring my shorts it sounds like i should uh, stick with my my winter gear bring your shorts bring your I mean, you might want to go swimming or uh you might want to hang out in a sauna but uh mm-hmm. or, or you know bring your arctic sh- your is there such thing as parka shorts imagine that <laughs> these are my winter <laughs> shorts shorts uh, over my snow pants <laughs> everyone everyone knows that one guy and i think that brandon may be that one guy who will wear shorts even in the coldest day and be like it's not so cold see i'm wearing shorts i think i've done that before yeah why would you do that yourself that's crazy i know i know that one i know that one person oh i was like bears 
that was my drummer for many years in the outlaw band. He would always wear shorts. Another thing he would often do is he'd go stand in uh, cold water and talk about how he could, he, I could swim across the Fraser River right there and, you know, things like that. And this one time we stopped at the Thompson River. We went down, we were probably smoking something, you know, and uh, so some of us went down before maybe he was up there rolling, I don't know, and uh, doing his thing. But as we went down to the water and then uh, our steel player, Zinger, he took this really long leak right in this little eddy that, you know, there's a kind of a, a little shape in the shoreline and the water's just sort of editing there. And he's just, he takes this really long and you can see all the bubbles. There's just like a lot of bubbles. And then the, of course, drummer comes down, like not even 10 seconds after he's done and uh, walks in, he's in his bare feet in his shorts, as always, like, see it's And then he stands in the water and he starts going on, see, it's not cold. <laughs> and, uh, and then Zinger's like, that's cause you're standing in my, my pee. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not it's look it's the fraser river it's gone by now i was like no man all those bubbles are from zinger leaking dude notice, like, that, there's, notice that there's only you know uh one set of bubbles and you're kind of like traping through the bubbles <laughs> calling us liars and going on about how warm the water is how he can stand warm water and how can you trust a guy that never wears pants i i i, I just i can't i can't figure it out in windsor ontario uh I know a bunch of people there that, and yes, I understand it's warmer there, but you know, January, February, uh, it'll get down, you know, every now and again, you know, minus eight, minus 10, and they're out there in their shorts. And it's like, do you even own pants? And and they do that whole, I'm, I'm from Canada. I'm, I don't need just pants. I don't need pants. Stubborn Ooh. refusal to accept reality. Just yeah. And, I know. Or, the, or, or the nerve endings in their legs yeah. are shot. Well, all I know is that it took me uh, finally 40 years to clue in that long John's, are awesome and i'm telling you i i've never worn a pair of long johns until like last month when winnipeg was going through a really really uh cold spell and um I just, I just could not believe i could not believe how warm my uh how warm my legs were and i'm 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 a believer i am now a believer in long johns hundo p what kind hundo of human p. are you how how much hair is on your body not <laughs> I like put surprisingly not much. <laughs> all, all, long, all the hair is here. <laughs> how much flesh that? I mean, I put long johns on in like you know September first here in Wells, and I take them off in like June first. Like sometimes I sometimes I take them off and put a new, new pair on, but but basically, and I love insulated pants like those Carhartts that are insulated. You know, like yeah, I'm I'm wearing long johns. What what I used to do is. Because I don't actually have any long johns or anything. Like, occasionally you, like, go up to the mountains and you go tubing or you go, like, on, like, a sledding adventure or something. And, like, what I would usually wear is I would have rain pants on top of my regular pants. And then for extra warmth, I wear, like, a pair of, like, fleece pajamas or something underneath how much rain are you going to be getting in vancouver this uh coming few days i mean you grew up in the lower mainland so you are acclimatized to how gross the weather can be there and uh, i just when i lived in vancouver for that time i just could never get used to it I, the mist the fog the damp i just after a while it felt like punishing it was punishing me i didn't know yeah. what i'd done to deserve where I've been stuck in life. People in Vancouver, you can't escape from major earthquakes forever. And see, that's the thing, is people that move to Vancouver from other places, that's exactly what they say. They're like, it's wet and it's, it's wet and it's cold and it's damp. And, and why, why am I here? This, like, how, like, how are, how are you not bothered by this weather? But see, so you have rats is, that live in your car. Oh, yeah, Frankie's have, back. You don't have to shovel snow, ever. I ever. yeah, I was, yeah, I was gonna yeah. And the they thing is, the because needles. I grew up here, I don't act, I don't like actually notice it as much. It's just like, oh, look, it's raining. <laughs> it's going to do that until March, and I just and uh, I just put a raincoat on, and I kind of am like, oh, look, it's going to rain fifty millimeters today. I, yeah. 
I'm going to wear a raincoat. So Frankie, he's not wearing a raincoat, and he's walking around Sydney, Nova Scotia, giving us a tour of Sydney, Nova Scotia. Frankie, where are you now? Oh, uh, I'm in the other end of Charlotte Street. I'm in the other end of Charlotte Street now. What's that? What's that behind you? Houses? Chinese pizza. Chinese pizza. Amazing. Chinese pizza. I didn't know you, there was Chinese pizza. Well, so that's no, there's no Chinese pizza in Sydney, Nova Scotia. It's Chinese pizza. Oh, okay. And what does that say in that sign there? Casino, zoo. On the sign says Chinese pizza. That's the sign. <laughs> What's that across the street there? Is that the Chinese pizza? That's Center Two Hundred Casino. It's no Chinese pizza. Okay. Is their pizza really good? Here. Chinese pizza, it's Italian, not Chinese. It's Italian. Gotcha. There's Center 200. That's where Cape Breton Eagles play. Oh, there it is. Cool. That's yeah, yeah. I think Center 200 is up ahead. Center 200, home of the Cape Breton Eagles, formerly the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. What one did you like better, Frankie? The Cape Breton Eagles or the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles? Cape Breton Eagles. I like the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles better now. It's Cape Breton Eagles. Why did they take the screaming away? That they changed it. That's the way they are. Huh. Fair. I guess they just thought it wasn't I really like the Screaming Eagles, though. I liked seeing Mark Andre Mark Andre Fleury wearing his uh Cape Breton Screaming Eagles stuff. He was probably my my favorite Cape Breton Screaming Eagles, probably Mark Andre Fleury when he used to live there. I guess uh screaming just isn't really hockey macho. What's that behind you? Is that houses that people live in? That's Cape Breton Business College. That's Mackenzie College. All right, what else is there, Frankie? Tell us about tell us all about Sydney, Nova Scotia. How many people Show live in Sydney? Sites. A lot. Over 30,000 people. Cape Ooh. Breton Career College. That's a that's a people go there to take their, take their training and things like that. What can you become if you go to school there? Well, Lots of different things. There's United Heritage Church. Oh, how old is that church? Pretty old. Hundreds of years? I might have walked into his Wi-Fi there. Frankie McDonald walking around Sydney, Nova Scotia. I want to go to Sydney, Nova Scotia, because he tells us there's going to be an eclipse in uh, April 8th, 2025. A full solar eclipse in Sydney, Nova Scotia. And that's uh, the time. I, I'd like to just someday imagine visiting everybody at some point. Uh, coming to see polar bears, going for a tornado chasing uh, run with Brandon. That's probably the most doable, because at some point I will jump over to Alberta and spend a, a week storm chasing. I mean, that's just... It's been a couple of years since I've been able to do that, but that's something I've done before. And uh, usually I'm playing gigs as part of it. Have a show to play at 10 o'clock at night, but uh, the storm is lighting up until then. April 8th, 2024. 24. 2024. And it'll be, uh, it looks like it. Yeah, it goes right over, uh, right over Sydney. I was actually planning on being uh, in Toledo, Ohio, because <laughs> it just, just south of Windsor, which is where, all my family is from. Um, it's about a 45 minute drive, but heck if, uh, if that's what it takes to get to Sydney, Nova Scotia, I'll, I'll do it. I've never seen a solar eclipse, uh, like a full total solar eclipse in my life. And this one will be the first one that's seen in Canada since 1979. That's the year I was born. So if we both go to Frankie's for the solar eclipse, which one of us is going to get the couch? At the holiday in Sydney, Nova Scotia, that's you will be staying. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, it looks like we're splitting the room there, Joey. No. <laughs> we'll do no it like a, we'll, no room we'll at do the end, like eh, tour and we, all, and we all just cram into and we all just cram into one. Uh, I'm not for that necessarily. And Monica, boy, you said, and Monica, when she was working for Bell door to door, she stayed at Hampton Inn. Hampton Inn, that could be another place. That's what Monica said so. Oh, I see. You don't really have people stay on your couch much, do you? Well, how, he, we'd be cramping his style. How is he supposed to do the uh, the the dancing videos if we're if we're crashing in his in his living room? No, he needs us in the hotel so he has his whole house to do his dancing videos. He doesn't want us in the background cramping his style because he's got he's got way better moves than us. That means a uh, that means a uh, Monica said, and uh, Monica said Hampton Inn or Holiday Inn. The hotel it is, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> Frankie has spoken. Well, at least That's he got right. breakfast, hopefully. Oh, breakfast. continental continental oh. breakfast. Yeah. I'd be down <laughs> with that. I'd be down with that. But yeah, twenty April eighth, twenty twenty four. I don't whether I'm in Toledo, Ohio, 
or Sydney, Nova Scotia, I am not missing that eclipse. Let me tell you. Well, you could do what I did in uh, Saskatoon the one time where I walked by a, a hotel downtown and I was quite hungry in the morning and it said uh, free continental breakfast. So I said, cool, free breakfast. And I walked in and I uh, had breakfast. Yeah. And if they had, I would have said, it says in the sign, free breakfast, bud. So they don't usually have much at those breakfasts, but if you can find enough hotels that are close to each other, you can really fill up for the day. Have a nice yeah. bowl of cereal. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's basically what I got. I, I just like stole a couple boxes of cereal. A banana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of juice. You're good to go. You just go from hotel to hotel, just grabbing continental breakfast, and there you go. As long as you hit up three hotels, there's your meals for the day. Bada bing, bada boom. Well, the one time uh, we were trying to get a hotel in Sycamus, British Columbia. It was like two in the morning or something like that. We were going to drive all the way to Calgary that night, but then Zinger got too tired. He's like, no, we can't. I got to. I said, don't worry, I can get us a hotel. So I go in and I ring the bell. And then this like woman comes from like this house way across this big, long parking lot. And she's all tired and doesn't look very happy. And then, but we do our business. Then at the very end, she, she says, uh, now I just need the, your credit card. And I said, well, I just gave you uh, 150 bucks. What do you mean uh, you need my credit card? She's like, well, you need to have a credit card. And I, I just, uh, you know, I was still kind of new to the world, I guess, or maybe the world had changed at that point from the country boy I used to be. And she, then she starts getting belligerent. She says, what was the last time that you uh, were able to get a hotel without a credit card? And I said, well, actually, in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, I just did it three times. Uh, two months ago, because I was playing a lot of music on the road at the time, and I just did it three months ago. But I said, that's all in Eastern Canada, where people uh, want your business, and they're nice. And then she got all mad. She kicked me out and uh, wouldn't give me a room, so I got my money back. And then we're out in the parking lot, and uh, she's yelling at me. She's walking away, calling me all kinds of this, that, and awful, mean, nasty things. And uh, I couldn't, you know, so I started yelling back, and I get I open the door of the vehicle and everyone in the van's inside the vehicle. And of course, they're hearing me yell at this woman. Like, okay, this isn't going very well. I had this, uh, there was a big bag of Arby's garbage because we were all eating gar Arby's that night in Kelowna. Just to be a total jerk, I took the Arby's garbage bag and I, I threw it out, out in the parking lot. And I said, you hate working so much. There's something for you to do tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, thinking I'm smart. And then, uh, but then I, I go to get in the vehicle, I get, I close the door and I say to Mike, he's driving, I said, come on, let's go, man. He says, uh, no, I think she wants to talk to you some more. And I said, no, drive, start the vehicle, drive. And he says, no, I'm pretty sure uh, she wants to talk to you about something. She opens the door and has the bag of Arby's garbage and she started like hitting me with it. It was like something at a trailer park, boys. And she's like smacking me with the Arby's garbage repeatedly. And I was swearing at her and slapping at her hands, like, you know, and stop it, you know, and, and Mike say, yeah, she, she really wanted to talk to you. And then finally I closed the door and I was covered in marinara sauce. It was the marinara <laughs> sauce was flying all over the place because there was a big tub of marinara sauce in the garbage bag. It looked like I would look like a bloody marinara mess. Of course, everybody's just laughing at me. I guess that didn't go very well. And then we drove all night through. And uh, so it's all three times we stopped in Sycamuse for one reason or the other, it was a terrible experience. So, uh, well, you know, I stayed at, uh, at a hotel and had a very different experience. You know, I had a, uh, I was kind of flirting with the, with the, the check-in person. And I so said, you didn't uh, get marinara sauce on you. No, I asked for, I asked for her number. It was zero. <laughs> uh, I stole that from Mitch Hedberg. That's uh, that's one of my favorite. Uh, as soon as you started talking about the uh, hotel clerk, that joke popped into my mind, and he says, "Yeah." Uh, and then I, uh, you know, I went to another another town, and I tried calling her up, calling her up, and I said, "You sound different." Yeah, I've never had marinara sauce uh, uh, poured over me or exploding in my face in a fit of rage. So that one, uh, that one's uniquely you, Joey. Only. Yep, that was uh, marinara madness night on our way to play uh, Calgary Stampede gigs at the Palomino in Calgary. We often would travel to uh, Calgary back and forth, and uh, we had many strange experiences, three strange experiences in Sycamus. I got kicked out of uh, a restaurant for a bizarre reason from these, like, 13-year-old waitresses that were really bad. They're, like, at order, they, you know, they basically came to our, there's, like, five of us. They come to the table, the one girl does, and she takes one person's order, then walks away, and we're all, like, Okay, 
Then she comes back like three minutes later and takes the next person's order. And this went on and it was terrible. And then uh, just to speed things up at one point, I, did, I asked the one girl, she had a bunch of stuff in her hands, like, hey, can I grab the Frank's hot sauce from behind the counter here? I'd worked in restaurants like before they were even born. She says, sure. So I reach around, but then the other girl comes out and she starts giving me heck. I kind of swore. I just said, uh, what the F? You know, and shrugged and went back. And then I ate my entire burger and fries. I was all done my meal. And then she came out and she's like, well, if you're going to swear at us, you can leave. And I was like, all right, I'll leave. <laughs> and she's like, well, you, you, well, you, and as I'm walking out the door, she's like, well, you have to pay. And I was like, no, you kicked me out. I don't have to pay now. And then I stopped and explained it to the manager in the uh, gas station side. I was like, yeah, we're the people who just bought 250 bucks worth of gas for our two vehicles. And uh, this is my experience over there. And uh, I'm not paying. I just got kicked out <laughs> from your terrible. So I don't know. But so hopefully 15 years later, Sycamus has got its act together or something. I see there's lots of people who follow me on. And uh, I got something to tell you. Roger the Wild Child's coming to Sydney for Total Eclipse on April the 8th as well. Endeavor drinks. Those are the people on the Roger the Wild Child show as well. Are they staying in a hotel too? No, they're yeah. probably staying on his couch. That's probably why. Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> staying in a hotel, those guys. We'll have to all stay in the same hotel. Too? Yeah, I hope we, we should all stay in the same hotel and have a big pre eclipse soiree. Or and Jason Marshall, we don't have cookies. He'll be going to a hotel too. Jason Marshall, we don't have cookies. He's coming to Sydney for Total Eclipse as well. I bet you there'll be competition for the rooms. What we have to do is put on some concerts while we're there. Yeah. That's, that's how I always got to see everywhere I wanted to see in Canada. And so I just want, if I wanted to go there bad enough, I'd make friends and play a gig. Where do we play a live gig in Sydney, Nova Scotia, Frankie? The old triangle. Yeah, the old Woo! triangle. That's right. Absolutely. How many people can fit in a triangle? Well, you need to use Pythagorean's theorem for that equation, I think. Is it, is it a triangle tall or is it a triangle laid out? The old triangle, that's the name of the bar. That's where Angel squared Doyle plays. Plus B squared equals C squared. Right. Do they like country could... music? Am I going to go over? What Roger the what... Wild Child probably be there too. Roger the Wild Child podcast. And Deborah Drake, those are the people to Roger the Wild Child show. Jason Russell, the Donut, Donut Cookies, Trey Cable for Maine on Trade Podcast. So uh, we better book our hotels quick. And whoever, if I have to have uh, another bed in the room, I, it's got to be someone who's sober. What's our you backup if, uh, if there's going to be cloudy skies in Sydney? Like, we, we got to have a backup. We're all going to play Toledo. Toledo. <laughs> no, I'm going to go to the, the highlands and hike the hills and make YouTube videos about the beautiful wilderness scenery of Cape Breton. We could, go, we to, go. could go to my friend's hostel up, up there. Your friend has a hostel in Sydney? No, not in Sydney, up by Cape Breton. Oh, well, that's where that's, isn't yeah. that like where Sydney is? How big is Cape Breton? It's I, huge. I don't oh. think, I don't know if it's super huge, but yeah, Bryson that you, aka like, Striker that used to play in, in Loose Tooth now has like a hostel and he's building a longboarding museum and he's doing like all kinds of crazy stuff like out in the mountains, like outside of like Cape Breton. 50 PEIs in friggin' Cape Breton, probably. Well, guess what? My social media is my Twitter's at Frank McD. My Facebook is Frank and Donald. My Instagram is Frank McD984. My TikTok is Frank and Donald 984. My Clap is Frank and Donald 984. My Twitch is Frank and Donald 984. My LinkedIn is Frank and Donald. My Snapchat is Frank and Donald. My YouTube channel is Dogs and Wolves. Happy 50th episode, Frankie. Woo! Congratulations, you Best guys. Best luck, yeah. I'm Frank and Donald. You're listening to Comedian Rheological Report. Thank you, Frankie. That's right. You've been tuned in on C for 88.7 FM and Prince George and Winnipeg. You've been listening on CKUW 95.9 FM, your show about how much the weather sucks in Canada. I'm Joey Only, your host. With you here was Frankie McDonald in Sydney, Nova Scotia, Brandon Houck in Brooks, Alberta, Joe Stover up in Churchill, Manitoba, and Noel Chaos down in Vancouver, British Columbia. Please tune in next week and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.